Testing. 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 Yay. Okay. I'm using this again because I don't want to yell. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our fourth lecture. And today's programming section will be about CSS positioning and centering. Okay, before we begin, we have a couple announcements. So homework three is due right now. Um, if you haven't turned it in already and have completed it, go ahead and turn it into your GitHub. Um, we'll be releasing homework four tonight, and that is due on 2.29, uh, which is next Thursday. And then we have our very first project. So our midterm project will also be released tonight. And we're gonna have check-ins with you guys. Um, it's due next Thursday. Basically, the way that you'll do check-ins is you have to go to office hours or lab and check in with your TA or any other TA um, and just sort of show them your Figma mock-up. So if you didn't go to last week's lab or makeup lab, uh, Kathleen recorded a video for you guys on how to do Figma. It's like a tutorial and it'll be up. Um, is it posted already? Okay, LinkedIn lab announcements. So you guys can refer there if you're confused on how to use Figma. Um, there's also tons and tons of resources on YouTube for um, like tutorials on that. So I highly recommend you check them out. So yeah, your check-in will be your uh, Figma mid-fidelity mock-up. Um, so yeah, be ready to bring that in uh, with a TA or one of the instructors. High fidelity, not mid-fidelity, my bad. High fidelity mock-up. Okay, and then just as a quick reminder, um, mandatory for attendances for lecture to get a passing grade for this class. So um, yeah, if you haven't been showing up lately, <laughs> maybe try to get your four attendances in and remind your friends. Okay, so let's talk about the midterm project a little bit. Um, it'll be released on Notion and you guys are gonna finally be creating a website from scratch. Yay! Um, we're giving you a theme. It's still secret right now, but you'll see it on the Notion. Um, so get excited. <laughs> we need your high fidelity mock-up by Thursday. Like we said, uh, check in with the TA. Uh, this check-in is worth three points. So if you don't get it checked off, your maximum score will be 19 out of 22. So even if you get full credit on the coding and design portion, but you didn't go to the check-in, you will not get full credit, sad. So make sure to check in with someone. And don't start coding until you've been checked off. Any questions? No? Okay, awesome. So before we begin, let's recall our HTML schedule, skeleton. Um, so this skeleton has many, many boxes, uh, each representing a div and the children elements that it contains. So for example, there's that big blue box that encompasses everything. And then there's a parent div and it has multiple elements inside it. So for example, we have the header, which is the Berkeley food guide. So that's at the very top. And then there's a description and title of restaurants and coffee shops, everything like below it. So right now we're like dividing up the different sections, but it doesn't look too awesome. So today we're gonna learn how to kind of like make it a little bit more aesthetic and nicely spaced out. So it is important to think of these divs as containers and parent-child hierarchies. Um, when we have content, we wanna position them relative to their containers. So like for our raw HTML, we made two columns of content uh, as well as the nav bar moved to be like horizontal. And the nav bar is like the blue links at the top. So already it looks a little bit better, um, a little bit more readable. Stuff is like spaced out a little more nicely, aesthetically, and a lot easier for the user to navigate. So this is kind of our goal for today. So the big idea about divs and boxes is positioning. When we position things, we are disrupting the page's normal flow of elements. Uh, you actually got a little bit of experience with this in the labs. Um, when you guys use margin and padding to center the contents of your website. So we're going to dive a little deeper into that today. Okay, positioning. Here's some vocab that is important for you guys to know. Um, so static is the default position. It positions the elements according to the normal flow. Um, but then you can change position to relative and that positions the element according to the normal flow, but then offsets the relative to itself. The offset doesn't affect the surrounding elements. Then we have absolute. 
uh, the element is pulled out of the normal flow and positioned relative to its closest position ancestor. We'll go more into each of these later, so if this doesn't make a lot of sense right now, don't worry. And then lastly, we have fixed. So the element is pulled out of the normal flow and positioned relative to the window slash viewport. I'll give you guys a second to finish taking notes. Okay. So default positioning, or as we saw before, uh, static positioning. So here we have a div class container and then ABC all just stacked on top of each other on the left side. This is what the default looks like. Probably something similar to what you saw in homework uh, two and lab two. But then, yeah, so then we have position relative. Um, like I said before, is the position, you position the element according to the normal flow and then offset relative to itself. So the offset won't affect the surrounding elements. And I'll show you an example of this right after. Okay, here's the example. So as you can see, B's position is relative. So despite, like, regardless of the position of A and C, B is like overlapping. It's not like interfering with any of their um, positions. But then if we were to change this, and we want to change um, the left margin and the bottom to go upwards, B moves, but A and C stay the same. So yeah, the position uh, is relative to itself, which means it doesn't affect any of the surrounding objects, which is like super nice if you want to put like an image over like text in a website or something, you don't want it to like interfere with the rest of your website, you can use position relative and it'll just style it like on its own thing without affecting anything else. Okay, next we have position absolute. The element is pulled out of the normal flow and is positioned relative to its closest relatively positioned ancestor. Here this means, um, okay, well, I guess before that, can anyone like sort of tell why like this B just totally broke out of the box here? Any guesses at all? Or I guess here, what happened? Why did things break out of the container? Oh, it, it has the answer, but like pretend you didn't see this. Anyone want to guess? Okay, that's fine. I'll tell you. It's because we don't have a div class container. And because, um, like I said, it's positioned relative to its closest uh, relatively positioned ancestor, well, there's like no container. So obviously it's like, gonna like freak out and go outside of the box. Um, but yeah, when we have content, we wanna position them relative to their containers. This is super important to remember. So it should look something like this. You have a um, class called container and then you make the position relative and then you can style B individually. That makes sense. Okay, yay. Um, what if you want to put things on top of each other? What if you wanted to label or what if you wanted to layer A on top of B? Um, then you would use um, a container as well. Um, position would be relative. And then there you go. For um, items A, B, and C, they're going to have like a class or ID. Um, you can position them all as absolute. So if you put them all in the same spot, they're going to overlap over each other. OK, so more on this. Think of relative, relatively positioned ancestors as the origin point for absolute positioning. Um, here's like an example that we're going to give. So take a look at this super nice Airbnb page. Um, very aesthetic, and they're like login, or not their login, um, their like search bar has everything positioned, uh, super organized and aesthetically. And this is your relatively positioned container. Um, you want to use absolute positioning to put the sign up form here. So basically, what they did is they layered the um, sign up form over the main image. So that way it shows up over it. Okay, lastly, we're going to talk about fixed position. So again, the element is pulled out of the normal flow and it is positioned relative to the window slash viewpoint. So here's our last example. Uh, the position is fixed for the nav, but it is relative 
for the individual classes. So they're gonna kind of stack on top of each other. Oh, wait. Anyway. Yeah, so you can see a lot of this in action on our web design uh, decal webpage. And you'll also be utilizing it a lot in your midterm projects. So um, yeah, if you didn't like fully understand it, I encourage you to go back and review the slides in your own time, like really get it down because um, positioning and centering is like a huge important part of web design. And it's gonna what it's gonna be like what makes your website really come together. And okay, now let's talk about centering. So let's say you have some elements, some block elements, and you name the class like potato or something. If you were to do margin right and margin left, then it automatically puts everything in the middle because you're taking the left and the right and you're just kind of like squishing it together. So everything is automatically aligned. Uh, another way to do this is by doing margin zero auto. It achieves the same effect, but these are just two ways that you can center things. If you want to vertically center block items with absolute positioning, basically you would do width, height, oh, wait, go back. Um, width and height, so put it wherever you'd like it, and then position absolute, and you can bring it down. Uh, this is where like grids kind of come in, where we were talking before. Um, like you kind of want to think about where you want things to be on your web page, and then style them accordingly. So as we see here, like we're doing height fifty pixels, and then width one hundred pixels, and then to bring it down into like that um, fourth quadrant, we do uh, top fifty percent, and then you make the position absolute. Um, yeah, so we also have another uh, function called transform, and then you can translate it uh, to be negative 50%. Does anyone want to take a guess at what the 50% is doing in the transform? No, okay, that's totally fine. Um, it moves the block up negative units. Uh, so, and then it moves it up whatever its length is divided by two. So that's also useful for positioning. If you don't want to do like margin left, margin right, you can just do translate Y or translate X as well. Um, yeah, okay, so it's a little confusing, but we can center center things too. So maybe you don't only want it to be in the center of the Y axis, but also the center of the X axis. So you can use, uh, instead of translate Y or translate X, you can just use the function translate. And then um, the parameters are the x and y values. So if you do negative 50, negative 50, that's going to put it directly in the center of the page. It's basically just translate x and translate y combined. It's one thing. Any questions? OK, awesome. Moving on to miscellaneous things. We also have another thing called z index. So for example, we have. Um, a and B are overlapped, but B is in the forefront and A is in the back. What if we want to change it so that A is in the front? Well, we have something called Z index um, that kind of tells, lets us tell the CSS like, hey, this item is more important than the other item. Um, so for example, if we say A is one and Z is zero, it's going to prioritize A and sort of put it in front of B. So you can do this for um, images, you can do this for text if you want to put text over an image, um, super useful. So yes. OK, and that's, that is it for today's programming lecture. Are there any questions before we move on to design? OK, yay, awesome. OK, now I'll pass it on to Eileen for design. Yay. <laughs> I'm going to turn this off. You can turn it back on when you want. Okay. Oh, you'll have to switch over on this one too. You want me to do it? Yeah. Okay. Let's switch over to leaf four and then color theory. And then slideshow. Hi, um, welcome to week four of our web design decal. 
This week, we'll dive into the basics of color theory, an essential aspect of web design that influences mood, communica uh, communicates messages, and guides user interaction. Okay, so um, we'll start with some foundational terms in color theory, hue, value, and saturation. Understanding these terms will help us uh, to communicate about color more effectively and make more informed design decisions. So hue refers to the base colors on the color wheel. When we talk about color in terms of red, blue, or green, we're discussing hue. Is the aspect of color that most people think of the most. And value is about lightness or darkness of a color, and adjusting the value of a color to introduce depth, highlight elements, and affect the overall mood of a design. And saturation describes the intensity or purity of a color. So high saturation colors are vivid and eye-catching, while low saturation colors are more muted and subtle. So by uh, you can make shades by adding black and tints by adding white, as you can see in the picture. So how do you pick which colors to use? So in this case, there are three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And also, there's three secondary colors, orange, green, and violet. And also, uh, there are six tertiary colors, red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, blue, violet, red, violet, which are formed by mixing a primary color with the secondary color. Also, um, the complementary colors are two colors that are opposite, and triadic colors are three colors that are equally spaced around the wheel, and analogous is three colors side by side. So these are the examples. And um, yeah, you can use color palette generators for your web uh, design. So let's just put together what we just learned for this. And um, on here, you can see that hue is pure color, and tint is hue with white, tone is hue with white and black, and shade is hue with black. So color evokes emotions. So we'll discuss how specific colors can be used in user experience design to guide users convey information and create a cohesive look and feel. So red is a very emotionally intense color. It connects to our urges to order that pizza because I'm hungry and continues wiping right in hope of, of oh God, I'm so lonely, as you can see in the picture. So you can use red for important actions in UX or expressing strong, bold emotions in design. is a very reliable and calm color, which is used in most of the web design these days. It's a very neutral color that's much easier on the eyes than red or yellow. It generally, it's generally suitable for many general purpose websites. It builds trust and rapport with your users. Zoom, because we saw, because it's an example. And also, um, yellow is a bright and creative color. It's a very vibrant and attention-grabbing color that is used in association to trendiness and quick decision-making. So now we'll move on to practical applications and tips in web design. The contrast is key for readability and accessibility. So it's like a measure of a difference in perceived luminous or brightness between two colors. 
Well, you were how to ensure your type stands out against this background and making your site user friendly for everyone. The contrast is an effective way to check if your colors have good contrast and it's like completely desaturate them and then compare their grayscale values. The tools like accessible colors can help you uh, make sure that your design is accessible. These are the examples for concentration. Also, no one actually uses pure black or pure white as they can be harsh and blunt. Softer color shades like uh, 333 are often a better choice for text and UI element, uh, creating more comfortable viewing experience. So now you have like the perfect color scheme. And these are uh, the color, like you can just apply this to a website like this. And um, as you can see from like this to this, primary colors or primary elements. So the yellow in the background was um, to bright for your eyes and stuff. So we just like replace it with white and this is how you like apply the color of the green like that we talked about earlier. And the navigation elements and like the feel of like the website, like uh, accent colors were meant to stay just like, as you can see on like the bottom. So you have to like match your color scheme with your images in like the website. Like, um, like these like color palettes. And um, do you have any questions? Okay, uh, we do have a Pendant form right after this, so don't forget to fill it out. Uh, I just end the Zoom. Should I just end the Zoom first, I guess. I don't, I don't see it. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I like... <laughs> 